Hello, everybody. I'm back. Um, sorry I haven't been streaming the past week. Uh, between family visiting and the holiday and then the end of last week has been a really rough, but everything's good. Everything's back on track. We're going to uh, get right into the swing of our uh, July streams. So, I don't remember what we had planned. Oh, before we get into anything, um, temperature blanket will be on hold until at least September. It's a little too warm to be working on temperature blanket in mid-Atlantic summers. Um, so that's on hold. Um, we were going to be doing filet crochet last week. We're actually doing that tonight, possibly thir Tuesday. Um, our Throwback Thursdays have been postponed to this coming Thursday. So what I had planned for last Thursday, it's going to be a few weeks out, probably into early August. But we've got all the Throwback Thursday vintage stuff. And that kind of ties into what we're doing tonight is we're doing filet crochet. And I'm going to show you what filet, filet crochet looks like. This here is filet crochet. It is pretty easy to do. If you can count to the number three, and if you know how to do double crochets and chains, you could do filet crochet. With filet crochet, as you can see, you could do pictures either pictures like this where the heart is um we're going to call it the positive i guess and this mesh open work is the negative space you can also do it like this where the outline is the negative space is the holes the open work there's different ways of doing it it's all pretty much the same same way and I will show you some other examples of filet crochet. Oh, that is an example, but that's not the one example I want right now. Um, here we go. This is just a Google search for, for filet crochet. So you can get real intricate. This piece right here is from Wikipedia. I don't... I guess it's like a table runner or something. That is filet crochet. It's a slight variation. There's is a little bit different than what I'm doing, but it's pretty much a similar concept. Let's see. You can do letters. They spell, we don't want to do that. They spelt out the word filet and a heart. Okay. Um, we'll get into figuring out how to make a design. This is something that somebody is selling on Etsy. It's a peacock. It's a, it's a pattern. That's filet crochet. You can get real intricate with them. This is a simple one. And those are real simple. What we're going to do tonight is going to be simple also. Here's another example of lettering. There's another um, peacock. This is like a wrap. Um, chickens. You could do any type of picture. This is a variation. This is spider crochet, spider fillet. We're not going to do that. Um, there's a butterfly. So you can get really detailed with, like, okay, this is a knight on horseback. Doesn't have a head, just like the headless horseman. Um, I'm not certain what that is. So, oh, here's an example. It's a perfect example of lettering, all done in filet crochet. 
in the 1800s, it was known as open crochet or square crochet. I don't know the exact reason why it's called fillet crochet these days. But with fillet crochet, we're going to start with a pattern. And this pattern I used here, I came up with this pattern. And I will show you, this here is the pattern I made. Let me make this screen a little bit smaller. This is using the website, the free website called Stitch Fiddle, which I've referenced before on stream. And you can see here, I'm going to zoom in. We're going to focus on the bottom part mainly today. And let's get it centered. You can see here, it's you've got black squares and you've got white squares. Black squares correspond to, let me move this out of the way. Black square, squares correspond to a filled in space, like this, the heart. White squares correspond to the open squares, the mesh. You can use whatever color you want. It's just a, uh, to differentiate between the two. Regardless of which you're doing, if you're doing the filled-in area, this is filled-in area, or the open work, both of them, both of those squares in our design, each square represents three stitches. Either it represents three double crochets, or it will represent two chains and one double crochet. And we'll get into that here in a second. So my example here is done in crochet cotton. So the real thin stuff. That's traditionally, that's a, a very classic um, example of what you use to do a fillet crochet. You could do it in other material also, like on the Discord. Um, Discord member Fairy Dust eighty had posted in the Discord a scarf that he made that's fillet crochet, and this right here is the picture that he posted. So if you look, I'm going to zoom in. It's like an argyle diamond pattern. So you'll have a bunch of double crochets, and then you'll have like an open mesh stitch, and then you have a whole bunch more, and that. Um, a double crochet is then an open stitch. So that form of fillet crochet that's done in that scarf is very similar to the this portion here at the top, where the design is the negative space and the field of the piece is all done in double crochets. Again, you could do it either way. It's very common for this to be done on uh, table runners, tablecloths, um, curtains, uh, all different types of household pieces. That's traditionally what it was used for. So it's a decorative like most crochet, it's all de decorative stitches. So that is done in size five, a five crochet cotton. And remember, crochet cotton, the larger the number, the smaller the, the thread. So this is five. This is a little bit of a thicker thread. That's almost as small as I can go without going blind. So I'm not going to show how to do it with this thread because you won't be able to see it even with a magnifying glass. This was done the exact same pattern. Hey there, Fairy Dust. Hey, Grammy. The exact same pattern. So this pattern, oh, not that. This pattern here, and I will make it a little bit smaller. And let me zoom out. This pattern here that I came up with 
is this, and this here, this example, is the exact same pattern, but done on worsted weight yarn. You will notice a difference when you use the crochet thread, the smaller strand, you're going to have more definition. When you translates to the worsted weight, your heart isn't really the same. It's because the stitches are a little taller than they are wide. Oh, well, all three of them. I should mention that. Your three stitches, they're slightly taller than they are wide. Because again, our pattern, our squares, are three stitches. So it's going to be a little distorted. So you still get the idea, but you're not going to get the exact same proportions. So I'm going to show how to do the basic um, get started with fillet crochet. So we're going to re refer to our pattern again. Oh, I can't. Where did my pattern go to? Alrighty, so we can zoom in a little bit more. We're going to look at our pattern first. And like I mentioned, each square, either a black square or a white square, is going to equal three stitches. So one black square is three double crochets, one white square are two chains, and one double crochet. So to start, my pattern here, I've got 15 um, black squares. So 15 times 3 is 45. So we'll do 45 chains. But what we also have to do, because again, like I said, each square is 3. So you're going to do 3, 3, 3. So top so. 15 times 3, so that'll be 45 uh, uh, chains. But then we're going to have a turning chain to go up the side. Because when, when we do double crochet, remember, you... Let me remember how, how to phrase this. You're going to have three extra chains, if that makes sense. Because that'll be the next... turn to do a double crochet, if that makes sense. So you got your, all of your chains, so your 45 chains, and then to do double crochet, to make certain you have, you have 45 stitches, you have to do three extra, because that's your turning chain. Again, I know it sounds confusing, but I'll walk you through it. So just keep in mind, our first row, we've got 15 black squares. So that means what we're going to replicate is this very bottom edge here, where all it is is double crochet. It's real simple, this first one. And you, you could design your pattern however you want. You don't have to have double crochet all in there. You can have some of these to be open if you wanted. So we're going to do 45 chains it's two three four five oops, six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five twenty six twenty seven twenty eight twenty nine thirty 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. So there's our 45 chains, which represents our 15 squares times 3, because each square has got 
three doubles in it, or three stitches. But then we also have to have a turning chain, because if we just go into this, we're going to be short a stitch or two. So you're going to add three more. I got to remember, so that'll be your turning. I think that's how we have to do it. Yeah. So what we're going to end up doing is in the third chain from the hook, you're going to put in a double crochet. And you're going to, every chain will get a double crochet. And if we do this right, if I counted right, so I did three doubles there. Well, actually, there's the turning chain here. So that counts as one. So for our purposes, we're just going to ignore that. And we're going to count there's three. And we should have multiples of three. One. Two and three doesn't go in the fourth from the hook. Um, you know what? You're right. You're right. Thank you, Fairy Dust. Okay, so I got my multiples of three. So that was my forty-five plus three extra as a turning chain, and then we need one extra. We need that extra one. I think that's right. It's been a while since I've made my sample. So yeah, so we've got one, two, three, four. Yeah, I think you're right. Two, we'll find out at the end. Three. And I'm going to count in, in groups of three. One, two, three. And then I'm going to do one, two, and three. This feels weird because the past couple weeks, I've been working a lot in crochet thread. So I'm used to a smaller hook and thinner um, material. It's just this feels foreign to me working with worsted weight. There's one, two, and three. And I'm counting one, two, three, one, two, three, because each of those three stitches is one block. You've been wrong before, but I don't tell anybody. It would take my date in your image. That's all right. Hey, if I get to the end and I don't have enough, I can just add an extra one in there. I can add, just do a little fucking, oh, I didn't mean, I didn't mean to curse. My bad, sorry. Just, I don't know why I cursed. Add an extra, um, my brain went just fried. Add an extra double crochet. And nobody will, will, not be, will, will know the difference. One, two, three. Okay. One, two, and three. I'm not necessarily going to do this entire pattern on stream because that's a lot. I mean, I could, but we'll do a few of it. And I was miscounting. I'm sure we've all said the same for all. Yeah, I've said that many times. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Two. Three. One. Two, three. And if you're like me, 
I hate working into the chain. And I'm just working into the chain. I'm not worried about working into the back loops or whatever. I'm just working right into the chain. You, If you want, you can work into the back loops. One. Two. Three. And again, what I'm doing here is one, two, three. I am doing that first row of our pattern, the very bottom here, those black squares. I'm doing that very bottom row. One, two, three. Now when we started, that turning chain that we left here, I did not count that one as our one, two, three, one, two, three. Because it needs to have an edge. So you're always going to have one extra um, stitch at the edge. One, two, three. I'm almost to the end. I tried to pick make a pattern that uh, wasn't too involved. One, two, three. I'm gonna check, I'm gonna count here to make certain I have multiples of three left. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. I have an extra one. Oops. So maybe I added an extra chain when I shouldn't have, but it's okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get, when I get to the end here, I'm gonna count all of my stitches to make certain that I got a number that's divisible by three. And I will count all of that while we're at add. We're going to go to add in about a minute or two. Okay, I'm not going to do that last one because I'm going to count. So let's see. Let's start at our other end. I'm not going to count the turning chain. One, two, three. I'm just counting groups. I'm not actually counting, counting. I'm just doing... I'm a back bump kind of guy. I find it easier to do, to count the bumps on the chain than the Vs seem to be, yep. It does make a, a nicer, cleaner edge if you go through the back bumps. But for this sample here, I'm just going right into the stitch. I hate stitching into the uh, chain, so. Alrighty, so I counted right. I have an extra chain, so that's fine. So at the end, if I want, I can pick this out, and nobody will know that I had an extra chain there. We will go to an ad, and when we get back from the ad, we will do round and round. Round number two. I will be right back.
and welcome back. Oh, didn't realize I had that on screen. Okay, so we're going to switch over and bring our pattern here. So we have done our, maybe zoom in a little bit. We've done our first row here at the bottom. Now we're going to do the next row up. Well, the next row starts with a black square, then a whole bunch of white ones, and then a black square. So black square means there's going to be three double crochets for that square, just like we've done for the first row. So first we need to chain up three for our double crochet and turn. We're not going to count that as one of our stitches in our fillet. So to be the next three stitches, each of those stitches will each get a double crochet. So those three stitches is one black square. Now, the rest of them, except for the very last one, are, are white squares. And white squares in my pattern mean they're open, so they're the mesh. So what we're going to do is we're going to chain two, and then we're going to skip two. So chain two, skip two from our previous row, and then the third one, do a double crochet. And you're going to repeat that. So that's one square. That's one white square. The next square, we're going to chain two, because it's a white square. Skip two. And then the third one, do a double crochet. These open squares here, again, they're not going to be square because the scale is different because I'm using worsted weight yarn. So it isn't going to be completely square. But each of those are two, our first two open squares, or in my pattern, the white squares. So now we're going to continue. Chain two, skip two, and then the third one, do a double. That's all there is to fillet. Chain two, skip two, third one, do a double. Now, let's say our pattern, we're going to pretend, let's say our pattern called for four open squares, and then we have a closed square. Even though we don't on this pattern, let's say we did. So that means the next three, the next three stitches each get a double. So one, two, three. So if I did that, there would be a filled in square. And that is actually what I did here. We're gonna go up a few rows. So on this row, we've got a, a filled in square, which in my pattern is a black square. And then I had one, two, three, four, five, six open. So we had six open fillet squares, and then we had a filled in one. And that's all there is to it. I'll continue with this so you can get a get an idea. Um, my pattern is this row and the next row are identical. I'll show you how to work into this row when we go go when we do the next row. So we're gonna whoops chain two skip two and in the third do a double chain two skip two the third do a double again if you can count to three and if you can do a double crochet and if you can chain you can fillet crochet. Chain two, skip two, the third make a double. Chain two, skip two, the third gets a double. You pull out a lot of slack here. So this is what I've done so far. Let me zoom out a little bit so you, you all can see. It's a little bit wider than my camera angle can go. Oh, there we go. So that is our bottom row. And then here, this was our first black square. And then the rest are white until we get to the end. Zoom in a little bit more. Chain two, skip two, and then the third do a double. 
and that's all we're doing until we get to our last three stitches. Fairy Dust says, been working on granny squares for my blanket for myself. I decided to do a 16 by 12 instead of a 20 by 16. So that reduces the squares to 320 instead of 480. I have 168 squares made, more than halfway since I reduced it. Way to go. Um, I'd be interested to see what it looks like when it's done. I've never made a full size. Well, I take that back. I was going to say, I've never made a full size granny square blanket, but I've got a scrappy blanket that I've been adding to over the past 20 years. It's not, I don't think it's ever going to be finished. And there's some of them I got to, I got to remove because I don't know what I was thinking on some of it. Basically, um, any leftover scraps of yarn I had from any projects, regardless of the type of yarn, the gauge of yarn, and it's like a Frankenstein project. But, like I said, I've never made a full-sized um, project before. Alrighty, I think I counted wrong. Oh, I made a mistake. I made a boo. I made a boo boo in the beginning. I made a boo boo. So at the very beginning, and I'm not going to frog this out. We're just going to ignore it. The very beginning here. This was our chain, and this is our first double crochet. I should not have put that double crochet into that stitch. I sh should have started my first one here. So everything's going to be off by one for this row, but it's fine. It's fine because I've got four stitches here. I got my three plus the turning chain. So we're going to ignore that little mistake. So we had our last three. We need to put in a filled in square here. So the next three each get a double because that is a filled in square. Normally you would have gone into the top of your turning chain, but like I said, I started off wrong. We're going to ignore that. It's all it's off by one. This next round, next row, everything should be okay. So, our next row is going to be identical to this row. So first, we have to ch have to chain up three as our turning chain, and now, not that stitch. Sounds like an interesting stash buster. I need to do stash buster sometimes, or buy more totes. Yeah. It's an ongoing project, that granny square blanket. So, that was our turning chain. We're going to skip this stitch here because that's where this turning chain is coming out of. So the next three stitches each get a stitch because that is a black square from our pattern. The rest are open until we get to the end. So, to do an open fillet square on top of an open fillet square, it's real easy. Chain two, we're gonna skip the two chains, and in the top of our double crochet here, we're gonna put in a double crochet. Chain two, skip our two chains, and in the double crochet, put a double crochet. So that is going to form the mesh looking quote unquote negative space. So this row that I'm doing here is pretty simple. We're going to get through this row and then the next row is the row that has the very bottom part of the heart. And I will show how to work a solid square on top of an open square.
the really easy, simple way to personalize a piece of crochet work if you don't mind the open, lacy look to it. Because it's easy to uh, plan out letters and pictures and you don't want anything super detailed. I mean, if you if it is going to be super detailed, you're probably going to want to have it on a larger squ larger scale. Alrighty, so here we've come to our end, and I got to put in three stitches. This is where I made the boo boo before. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to put one in the first, and then actually no, okay, no, we're good, we're good. My brain was not thinking, so. We just finished with our last open square, which is two chains, one double. And now we got to put in a closed square, square right here. So a double. The next stitch gets a double. And then the top of our turning chain from the row below gets a double. So you're actually going to have at the ends, and that's getting washed out. That might help. You're technically going to have four double crochets next to each other, but at the end of the row, those three, those last three is a solid square. That first one is part of your open square. So it'll form this mesh negative space. Alrighty, so row number four is a, actually, I'll bring this over. So row number four is right here. Oops. We're going to change it. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Let me cancel that. So row number four has got a black filled in square, so a solid square, six open, one solid, six open, and one solid. So it's I just gotta remember there's six open before I get to the solid one. So to start, we're gonna start like we did before. And not all filet crochet patterns have a solid um, square all the way around. I just made up like a, like a border, basically. So we're not going to count that as part of our fillet stitch. That's just a turning chain. So in our next, we're going to skip that stitch here where that's coming out of. The next three each get a double crochet. So that was our solid. Now we need to do six open. So chain two, skip two. Double crochet into the double crochet. So that's one. We're going to do that five more times. Okay. The fourth one. So we've got four squares. One, two, three, four, four open squares. I'm going to do it two more times. That's the fifth. And then our sixth. Okay. So though, there we have our first filled in square. We've got six open. Now we need a filled in here. To do the filled in, again, each square, regardless of if it's open or filled in, it's three stitches, either three doubles, it's a filled in, or two chains, one double is an open. So we're doing a filled in here. So we need to do three doubles. So what we're gonna do is in the first chain here, we're gonna do a double crochet into it. You could go into the space, but it's gonna look a lot better if you go into the actual chain, which can be a pain. So there's one. Now in the next chain, it gets a double. And then a double into the double. 
So that is our first filled in square, the very bottom tip of the heart. And now we're going to have six more open. If I can get this double crochet to work with me. Again, I'm used to working with that really fine crochet thread. It's very disorienting to go back to worsted weight after doing that tedious work. I've been making some samples for our Throwback Thursday to show what they're going to look like and getting really addicted to working with crochet cotton. Okay, so that was our six opens. And now we have to do a filled in because this this pattern happens to have a like I said a border. Not all of them have this. You can design it however you want. So that is row number four. Now row number five is going to start the same. We're going to have a filled in, and we're going to have five open, and then three closed or three filled in. So chain up three, that's our turning chain, and turn. And now we're going to skip that stitch where that turning chain's coming out of. And then the next three each gets a double. Because that is our filled in fillet square. And now we're going to have five opens. I have not tried using crochet thread. Sock yarn is hard enough for me to maintain tension. Yeah, it can be difficult. Um, I am a tight crocheter, so my tension is always tight anyway. I have to sometimes like tell myself, loosen up on the tension a little bit. So maybe that's where I'm, I'm pretty good with it. But to do this... To, to do, and again, this is a size five crochet thread, which is a larger, thicker thread when it comes to crochet thread. I have to use my reading glasses and my magnifying glass. And I'm not even using the smallest hook. When I work with that, I'm working with a 2.75 hook. I'm not even using the steel tiny little hooks. I don't think I can do that, even with a magnifying glass. Okay. So we're going to do, we did our solid, and we didn't need to do five open. Two. So there's one. Two. three, four, and five. We've got five open now, five open squares. And now our pattern, you can kind of see it on what we did, and it's kind of difficult to constantly move it all around. Actually, I can probably do it like this. That might have been better for everybody if I put that there. So now where we're at is we're right here. We need to do these three filled in squares. So again, to do a filled in on top of a open, you double crochet into the first chain of that square, which that chain is very tight. As me and... uh. Clean Miko usually say we're tight hookers. And then the next chain gets a double. And then to finish off, because we're doing groups of three, the double crochet gets a double. So there's our one filled in square. Now we need to do two more. The next one's easy because each of these doubles gets a double. That one's real simple, real basic double crochet. And now our next square needs to be a filled in. 
So yeah, and you're going to do a double into each of the, the two chains. And it's better to go into the chain than instead of the space. You get more definition if you go into the chain. There are some times when I'm working on some projects that I will go into the chains, into the space. But with a fillet crochet, it's better to go into the actual chain. So there we have our three squares, because again, each square is three stitches. So three, three, three. And this double crochet, remember, belongs to the open one. So now we're going to do five open. Years ago, when I learned what fillet crochet was, I was intimidated. I was like, I didn't actually know how it was fully constructed. Just looking at it, I was like, oh my goodness, how would one begin to figure out how to put this together? But if you sit there and you just break it down, it's real simple. It's just groups of three. And I'm finishing up. The last one was a full. So that's all there is to fully crochet. I don't know if I'm going to do this entire thing. Um, one thing I'm going to mention here is if we're working this type of fillet crochet, all you would do, you would count the same amount, however many squares that you would have for your pattern, you multiply that by three, so you do however many you need, and you keep doing just double crochet into double crochet, real simple. Du one double into into one stitch below, so double into double, like you would normally just do just rows of double, and then when you get here, that's an open one, and that's when you would chain two, skip two, and do a double. And then the same thing if you work back, they my pattern wants a, an open there. Hopefully that makes sense. It's just however you design your pattern. Um, I'm going to scroll up here to, this is the top portion. And that is the pattern here for this. So again, anytime in my pattern, if it had a black square, that's a filled in fillet. Anytime it's white, it's open. Hopefully that explains what fillet crochet is. Again, back in the 1800, whoops, we don't want yellow. Um, is there an undo button? Yeah. Like I said, back in the 1800s, it was known as square crochet or open crochet, which to me, that makes sense because it's, squares and it's also open I'm not like I said I'm not certain why they call it fillet might be something I would probably look into it's really easy to convert any pixel image into fillet crochet pixel images are also easy to turn into mosaic correct very correct um you could also do the same thing, and I don't have an example of it. Having the pixel, the pixel grid pattern, the pixel image, you could do a form of crochet where I think it's mostly all doubles, but then where you want to have your design, it's like a, it's not a popcorn, it's more like a berry stitch. So to be raised up off of the surface, same type of thing. And we're going to have another ad here in a few minutes. So I'm going to keep working and I'm going to do four open and then I'm going to have my filled in because we're making a heart.
to, whoops. Three and four. And again, this is the way my pattern is. Your pattern is going to be different. If you're following a pattern or you're making up your own, you're going to have your open stitches and your filled in stitches in different spaces, depending on what the pattern is. And I will be back right after this ad break. Alrighty, welcome back. While we were at ad, I went ahead and did one more row. But it's the same type of thing. Wherever the black square is, I'm going to put three double crochets. Wherever there's a white square, it'll be two chains of one double. 
So like I said, if you can count to three, and if you can do double crochets, and you can do chains, you can do filet. Hey Anna, how are you? Someone had asked me one time to make them a black beanie with an orange tee on it because they're a Tennessee fan and wanted to wear it to a ball game. Looked up a pixelated tee and did my own design with mosaic crochet to make it happen. Turned out pretty exactly. Um, speak now that you mentioned mosaic later in the month. Think next week, sometime next week. I have to re redo my schedule since I didn't stream all last week. Um, we are going to do mosaic crochet. I don't know if anybody, any of you were around earlier in the year, probably February, March or whatever. I did do a stitch that is considered mosaic crochet, a type of mosaic crochet. It's a very common, very popular, easy pattern called the Apache tear stitch. I might do that again. And then a couple other ones I'm going to, um, demonstrate. So I still have to pick the ones I'm going to end up doing. But, um, yeah, if it's a pixelated pattern, an image, it could be turned into filet. It could be turned into corner to corner. It could be turned into mosaic. Um, what's that other one? And I mentioned it, I guess, I'm assuming it's, uh, I think it's the berry stitch where they do, that's just actual berry stitch. Here we go. Oh, it's the bobble stitch. Or or it could be berry stitch. Could be either. Uh why aren't they doing Here's an example. I don't know this pat there's no picture. Uh hold on, bear with me everybody. There we go. This is an example of similar type thing, but it's a it's a pixelated image, but where they have they'll have the images they'll have the different squares, whatever, like your two colors, like I was doing with the fillet. They'll make the letters, so they're raised and textured, and it's not. We don't. There's an ad. Um. You're not going to have the mesh look. You're going to have a solid look. So that's another way that you can uh, use a pixelated image. Um, like, for instance, here's the letter A. So you could do this letter A here in filet. You could do it in um, this berry bobble stitch to make it three-dimensional like that. Um, mosaic, you can do it all different. So you're using that same basic grid pattern and just how, what stitches you use and what color you use to uh, create it. And if it's not too detailed, if it's not too intricate and complicated, you can use basic cross stitch patterns, which is on a grid also. Again, if it's too complicated, then it might be a little difficult. Same thing, you could do that exact same pattern and use it for corner to corner. What's the very versatile thing and I saw and I said hello to her but Anna how are you 
if you're still here. I'm going to move my. Oh, I need to make that a little bit smaller. Alrighty. So right now, I am on row number eight. So I just did a filled in square. I'm going to have two open, and then I'm going to have a whole bunch of filled in until I get down here. So I'm just, again, just making the heart. It looks better in the finer weight um, thread than it does with the worsted because proportions. You're good. Just got, got to work, so you're still in sleepy mode. The heart looks cute. Well, thank you. Now, this is a pattern here I designed myself, real simple. It's it's just a heart. And I'm I don't know if I'm gonna do this entire thing here on stream, but there are two ways to do it. And like I said at the beginning of the stream, um your filled in area is your positive. So that is like the foreground, that's the focal point. And your background could be mesh, or it could be the opposite, where the outline is your open work. Up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, I messed up. See? That's supposed to be an open square, and I put a filled in one. That's what happens when I start running my mouth and not pay attention to what I'm doing. And now this one that I'm going to put here, the one that's going to go that hasn't been worked, is going to be a filled in one. But yeah, I've been, like I said, I've been working a lot with crochet thread. Um, surprisingly, I haven't gone totally crazy and blind, thanks to my magnifying glass, which is a lifesaver. Um, I will show a few things that I have made just as a practice I don't know necessarily if I'm going to show how to do those exact ones on stream maybe I will at some point um they're all vintage patterns and speaking of vintage this Thursday is our first throwback Thursday and I don't know if she's here but Grammy ETC is picking out the patterns that we're going to be doing on stream. I have no idea what they are. I know they're edging, decorative edging patterns. That's all I know. Um, I gave her a book of about 100 um, crocheted edging border patterns the book i think is from 1945 and i said you pick them so thursday she will hand me the book i haven't even opened the book she will hand me the book and she will let me know which ones we're doing and when we're on stream when you all see me that's when I'm going to find out which one we're going to do. So there are some that are real, I'm assuming, I'm just assuming, there's some that are really, really complicated. Because the ones that I have made, not from that book, but of that time period in history, and I'm talking the 1930s, the 1940s, were a little challenging. 
And I don't know if I showed these. You're still making your final decisions. That's fine. I don't know if I showed these on stream previously. And if I did, I'm sorry. But it's always cool to see them. This here, I think, is a simple... This actually is simple to do. It's one of the easier ones to do. Um, if I remember correctly, I can never... I think this one is some, from sometime in the 30s. They're all from the from the mid 30s to like the to like the mid 50s or so in that 20 year range. So there's that um, edging. It'd be good for um, around a hank on the edge of a handkerchief or the cuff of a blouse or the collar. So there's that one. Then I made this one. This one's a little more intricate. And some of these, this one is from one of my books that I have. The other to this one and this, the, the next one I have are all from that website called Free Vintage Crochet. I highly recommend checking that out. Even if you don't want to do anything this detailed, maybe do the pattern in larger yarn or even if you're just curious just to see all the cool pictures and the, the patterns and designs that they had so there's that and then there's this one this one's much wider it's more of like a netting type thing and this one i can kind of see gathered up somehow not like this a little more neat i can see even though this one is probably from this is from the 40s the pattern is not this piece this piece i made but i can see it gathered up more if you had if it was longer and that possibly if you're doing a period costume like the 1700s or whatever and that could be the cuff of an outfit, a pirate, that type of thing. So, and there's one thing I wanted to, I need to pull up. It's a thing that I read the other day that I found kind of interesting. Um, this is on a blog, and I'm just gonna read from the blog. Um, this is on a blog called 50pluslifepa.com. I just Googled history of textiles and whatever. I don't know when this was published. It's not saying. Anyway. Um, a little bit of a history. So, there was a thing called bobbin lace. And... I don't, I'm not prepared, but it was the, are, where it's these spools, multiple spools of your thread, and they would move them in different ways, and they, watching them do this is just mind-boggling of making this lace, okay? It's, the, and make these intricate patterns, okay, so... What does this say? Bobbin lace was the preferred needlework in the 1700s. It was made by nuns using silk or linen thread on multiple spindles to create complex patterns. In 1806, Napoleon's blockade of the English Channel stopped the shipments of silk from the East. So during that time, and this is in England, um, brothers James and Patrick Clark were running a loom equipment and silk thread business in Scotland. Um, to re in response to not having the silk, they created a method of twisting cotton yarns together to produce four-cord thread. It was so strong and smooth it could be substituted for silk and linen for hand sewing. Cotton was readily available and could be salvaged from existing fabric. This change in thread made needlework affordable. Um, I'm not going to read this entire thing. But basically, with the invention of the spinning jenny and the cotton gin... Uh, machine spun cotton was widely available and inexpensive. They didn't have to worry about silk and 
uh, linen. Um, crocheted laces, crocheted lace, um, uses more thread than woven bobbin lace, but it was faster and easier to make and easier to teach. Um, it was a popular and less costly substitute for bobbin lace. During the Irish potato famine, um, the nuns taught local women and children to crochet. They were shipped across Europe and America. Um, that's why there's a thing called Irish crochet, which stems from all of that, which is a totally different. It's a lot of floral work in it. Um, crochet became a thriving cottage industry in Ireland and northern France. Um, that helped with people who... Uh, their livelihoods are dam were damaged by wars and changes in farming. Um, the rich looked down upon crochet because they thought it was a cheap copy of older laces. Queen Victoria bought Irish lace, Irish-made crochet lace, and she even learned how to crochet herself to promote the acceptance of crochet. So they got acceptance from the queen. Um, the colors were very... Basic white cream, lightish, well, lightish brownish yellow. Um, there was a book called Gotti's Ladies Book, a pioneer women's magazine, along with others. It was published patterns for the homemaker. Women would form clubs to share the cost of the subscription, and then they would pass it from member to member. In the 1920s, America was changing from the conservative Victorian era to the modern era. Uh, evolution in crochet patterns and colors as well. The patterns were more elaborate and involved, but women were enamored with the quick and easy patterns for the new times. During the period of 1900 to 1930, crochet was economical. Uh, dainty laces for lingerie and collars, yokes for nightgowns and baby clothes. Crochet pieces adorned homes, arm um, pillowcases, armchair covers, bedspreads, doilies, dresser scarves. They weren't only decorative, but they were to help protect the furniture. Um, starting in about the 40s, that's when colors, more colors were more were being introduced, like blues, purples, greens, pinks, and oranges. So you can some of, sometimes you can date some of these variegated colors between the the forties and sixties. Uh, after World War II and into the early sixties, there was resurgence in home crafts. Um, colorful accessories, potholders, and other home items. Even Barbie dolls were dressed in crocheted gowns, and I think Grammy had a outfit that was crocheted for a Barbie doll, and I think she ended up giving it to Crojo Mojo. I remember that seeing that as a kid. Um, let's see here. It was primary homemaker's art until the late 60s through the 70s. Um, that's when granny squares became more popular and in, and in in vogue. Um, bright colors were more popular. Since then, crochet had declined in popularity, but now in the 21st century, we do have a more um, renewed interest in the art form. Uh, and that's pretty much it. They, they go on and on about other stuff. So, there's a long history about... Oh, I didn't realize I had that all on screen when I was reading that. So there's a long history behind all of this, which I find fascinating in itself. Not just making it, but just where it all comes from. Yes, older sister crocheted, generic Barbie doll, a two-piece designer suit. Yep, I remember. It was like a creamish, off-white color and had black, round, like, ball-type buttons. So, it's just not, crochet is a whole lot wider range of things than just 
the things that you see now that are popular because I mean we all know that there's there's a lot of history behind it all. So that's uh, a little bit of uh, insight of what's coming um, for Throwback Thursday. We're going to be doing a lot of vintage things, and again, I'm not going to be doing. Take that back. I will be doing these mystery ones, the mystery edgings that Grammy is going to come up with. I am going to do both crochet cotton and a size four worsted weight yarn because I'm going to I'm going to do it first in the worsted weight, so y'all can see what I'm doing, and after I get it. figured out how to do it. Then you're going to see me struggle trying to do the really thin stuff. Because I want to see what it's, what it's supposed to look like. And not just a larger, huge version of it. But again, any of the Throwback Thursday pieces that I've already planned out, which I have at least two of them planned out, I will do those in worsted weight. I have the um, sample, samples already made in the thinner thread. So I'm just working on the heart. And you could see above me what it's going to, obviously what it's going to look like. So I'm just doing another row of what I just did. So I filled in, I fill, filled in, then two open, and then a bunch of filled in, and then two open. Already done with your table runner, but I have been so lazy to block it. Exactly. Um, speaking of which, speaking of which, of blocking. So I made something the past couple weeks. There's a YouTube channel, and I've mentioned it many times, called Just Vintage Crochet. The Her name is Karina, and she will do vintage patterns. And that's kind of my inspiration on some of the things that I've, I'm, I'm going to be doing. Well, she has a mystery, different mystery than what I'm going to be doing, but she has a mystery... Um, series where she doesn't know what she's making. Her son has basically masked over the name, the, the 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 name of the pattern or what it's supposed to be, and she picks numbers out of, random out of a hat, and she just has the instructions going from things from the 1800s or whatever, and trying to decipher how to to make them. Well, she did one recently, and she couldn't figure it out. She got most of it done, and she couldn't figure out the last six or seven rows. Well, I was able to figure it out. And it's going to be too large to be put on screen here. I haven't blocked it yet. I need to find some way to block it. But this is a doily. It's a pretty large doily. And I think the pattern is from the 1850s. So... Again, it's going to have to be blocked. It goes all the way out to here. And then, yeah, so it's, let me measure roughly. Yeah, this took me a while to make. So this is a rough estimate. This is about, not roughly 20 inches across which is about 51 centimeters. So once I do get it blocked or starched or however we're going to do do it, this will go on to an end table in our living room. So it's modern. I made it, but it is a vintage pattern, which I'm like obsessed with this. <laughs> so... Just had to show off my uh, project that I made. 
And we are going to go to another ad break. I will be right back. And welcome back, everybody. So I'm going to show you the book. So I think it's actually books that this pattern came out of. I was able to find it online. 
Um, it's a PDF, so it's all digital. So let's move that like that. Let me see if we can zoom in a little. So what does this say? Mothers and Daughters of England, something book of useful and ornamental knitting, netting, and crochet work. And I can't read all of this. The Merry Home of England Around Their Hearths by Night. What gladsome looks of something, something, meet in the fire, fire's clear light. So, just some of the artwork and the uh, sketches. This is, they're calling this a lady's polka with ermine border, so it's like a coat. Um, they don't have pictures of everything in here. So the first is, first section is all knitting. So we're going to scroll down to the crochet. There's like 400 and some pages in here. Okay, here's crochet. Now this is an English um, patterns, and it's from the 1850s, I want to say, I think. Let me go up to the beginning here. Here we go. This is the crochet, crochet section. So... And I don't know how well this is going to show up on screen. I'll make it larger. I'll show you the ex explanation of stitches. Again, this is from England in the 1850s. Chain stitch. Draw a thread through the loop on the needle, which that is our chain stitch. What they call single crochet. Keep one loop on your needle. Put the needle through the upper edge of the chain and draw the thread through the chain stitch and the loop on the needle at the same time. That's a slip stitch. That's US, that's a US slip stitch. Double crochet. It says insert your needle into the upper edge of the chain stitch on the work and draw the thread through the work, then through the two loops on the needle. That's, that's U.S. single crochet. Long crochet. Catch the thread around the needle before you insert it into the work. Draw the thread through the work, then through one loop, then through two loops, then through the two loops remaining on the needle. Which, that... I don't know if that is a um, stitch that we have in U.S. terms because it says you. So you wrap it around, you go in, you pull up, and then you pull it through one loop, then through two loops, and then through two more. It's like a double crochet. But yeah, they've got a bunch of other ones in here. Um, Yeah, there's all different explanation of these stitches. And so it's kind of interesting to try to decipher what um, they're looking for. So I'm going to scroll down to the pattern for this doily that I did. Wait, wait, wait. Was it this? No, that's a collar. Bear with me. Okay. 
for the edging. I didn't have this already prepped. I didn't think it was this far down. Oh, here we go. This is the one that I did. So, um, I don't know what boar's head cotton is. I don't know what that is equivalent to in modern threads. Number 12, I don't, again, I don't know what that is. I just use the size five. But it's, let's just go to the first round. We're not going to go, they basically, they, they make a, um, a ring and they do 24 double crochets into it. Basically, if you're going to start like a, a granny square, but it says put one long stitch into every other chain stitch and make four chain stitches betwixt each long stitch. Yeah, trying to decipher all of that. But I think I got it. But it's just kind of cool to see some of the old uh, patterns and how they're written. And that is what we have there. So maybe I might do some other cool things out of that book or other resources that are online. So again, this still needs to be blocked, starched, whatever. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish up this one row. And then I think we're going to call it a night. We're not going to do the entire pattern. But I think you get the idea. Each block is three stitches, either three doubles or two chains and one double. Yeah, but I can't take all of the credit because Karina from Just Vintage Crochet, she figured out most of it and I watched it and I wasn't crocheting along with her for that doily. I was watching it and I'm like, okay, that kind of makes sense. And she got to most of it. She got up until, because the, the way it is worded is a little weird. She got up until about this row, actually this row here and it was confusing and I think there was a misprint in the original pattern so she ended up frogging back and just ended with this row here where it's got these three doubles a chain one three doubles and so on and she didn't have all of this extra netting she stopped here but I think I figured it out But I would strongly encourage everyone to check out her channel. It is listed in the Discord in the YouTubers to Watch channel. Um, like I said, the name of it is Just Vintage Crochet on YouTube. She makes things anywhere from the 1840s to the 1980s. She's done some really elaborate pieces she did a a full crocheted dress from like the 30s and it's pretty much all solomon's knots um she's done one of the latest ones she did is she did a capelet from 1891 that after it's crocheted it's got like open work it's not necessarily mesh like this but there are some open stitches and she's weaved ribbon through the open stitches. Um, definitely highly recommend checking her channel out. And she just announced, I think today, I think, or yesterday, the video she put out, she's going to be giving away most of the things that she makes on stream.
Oh, okay, we're, we're good. So I think we're going to call it a night there, even though I didn't finish my heart. But, like I said, you guys get the gist of it. We're going to see if there's anybody to raid. And let me take a look. Yeah. We are going to, we're going to switch over to this. Like I said, Tuesday, um, I might touch on a little bit how to design a fillet crochet pattern. I'm not going to spend too much on it if I do. But Tuesday, we will do t-shirt yarn. So we're going to go from super, super thin, delicate stuff to complete opposite. I'm going to show how to make t-shirt yarn, and we're going to crochet with it. You're going to use very simple stitches with it because it's kind of difficult to do intricate ones. But that is what we're going to do. So we're going to go and raid. We're going to raid Z-Man Crafts. I think he's working a plan pulling baby blanket. I haven't attempted plan pulling. It boggles my mind and it gives me a headache trying to figure it out. I've never actually done it, but just thinking about it. So more power to him. He's gotten a lot done. It looks really, really nice. So, uh, like I said, I will be on Tuesday. And if you want to stick around for the raid over to his channel, um, everybody have a good evening and happy crafting. And we're going to go and raid him.